Right, so I'm going to create a pond. And I'm starting by working with a brand new empty terrain and putting the original ground in the background. So my terrain is empty, um, but I want to see the original ground. So let's just add There it is. Same extent, and there's my surface. I can hover and find the elevation at any point on the surface, and I'm going to pick an area near here. The surface elevation is 398, so I'm just going to arbitrarily choose uh, 390 as my bottom of pond. So let's start by creating a new feature. I could just draw the bottom of the pond with the mouse, like so. But I'd like to be a little more accurate. So what I'm going to do instead is go into the coordinates edit mode. Control R does that. And change into survey format. And I'm going to type in azimuths and distances. So let's go due north for 100 meters. Add a new point, And we'll go due east for 50 meters. Add a new point, And we'll go south oopsie, for 50 meters like so. Okay. Um, whoops, that should have been 100 meters. Let's just fix that. Control R. Change that to 100. Update list. Okay. There we go. I didn't bother to close it because there's a nice close function here in our uh, features ribbon. There we go. There we go. Right. So I'm looking at um, the bottom of my pond. It's 100 meters by 50 meters. And just because I can, I'm going to rotate that. So uh, modify selected feature, move size, rotate. There it is. Could have done that with a right click as well, um, or even Control M. And I can move it when I see the four-headed arrow. If I move my cursor near the edge, I get the rotation hint. There. OK, that looks like a good bottom of pond. Um, now I'm going to build um, a berm around this pond and then grade the berm down to the original ground. So let's do that. To make the berm, I'm just going to use my um, buffer function. And I've chosen to make a pond that's uh, 8 meters deep, so I'm going to go 16 meters out. And I'm going to use a slope of 2 to 1. That'll bring it 8 meters up. Um, and now I need to go uh, either left or right. I'm pretty sure I got it on the right, on the uh, correct side with left. So let's just try that. Yep, there we go. Okay, and you can see the elevation of that is um, oh 108. See these these elevations are totally wrong. Um, I must have typed something wrong somewhere, um, but very easily fixed. So if I select both of these features. And easy to select here because there's nothing in this model except the pond. Everything else is in the background. Um, right. So I'd like the bottom of the pond, which is currently selected, Control-A, select all, to be at elevation 390. I don't know how I managed to get it to 100. Um, but this is how we shift it, 390. OK, good. So the bottom's 390. The top 398, and the elevation of the ground is around 399. Perfect. Let's now buffer this out one more time to make the top of my berm. I'm going to buffer it 2 meters. And this time, I don't want to change elevation, so I'll go at a slope of 0. There we go. Now, um, the outside of my berm needs to go down to the ground. I'm going to grade it, terrain modeling, grading. 
And again, I'm going to the left. I'm grading to the background file, which is the ground, the original ground. And I have to choose a slope. So it's going to be a, a negative slope of 2 to 1. I don't really care about the positive slope. That's cut. We might have some cut. I'm going to leave that at 100%. Uh, and we'll put in slope lines every 10 meters turn on all my grading options so that I can get a surface. Don't need contours though. And volumes. Okay, let's just run that. Well, that looks great. Okay, um, except it's telling me that I've got a fill volume which is much bigger than my cut volume and really shouldn't this be more cut than fill? Yes, I just have to choose which is my original and which is my final. There we go. So it's mostly cut, a tiny bit of fill. Um, wouldn't it be nice if I could balance this? So I'm going to lift the whole thing up and see if I can um, make it more balanced. So the graded feature, the outside feature here, is currently at elevation 398. I'm going to lift it up. And I want to lift everything else with it. So I just um, use Select All or Control A. I've still got the current feature selected as the, uh, the outside um, of the top of the berm, 398. And let's do that Shift function again. So 398, let's change it to 402. Just guessing here, um, we have had people asking if we could um, do this automatically. And the answer is yes, but it requires some programming. And we haven't done that yet. So um, it's a trial and error process. OK, so I lifted it up to 402. Um, but now this, this outer edge is no longer touching the ground. So let's just regrade it. It's still the current feature. Um, if you were a little worried that the other features are selected, you could just select it by itself. That's my outside grading feature, and I'll grade it one more time. I don't have to, need, I don't have to change any parameters. I just click on OK. And you can see that it makes the outside look quite a bit different. Um, and now my cut volume is a tiny bit smaller than my fill volume, so maybe I need to go down a little bit to balance. OK, so let's do it one more time. Control-A, select all. Shift, and uh, let's just go down to 401.8. Uh, again, it's a, it's a wild guess, but um, I tried this before, and it, it seemed to go pretty quickly. Uh, so you don't need to go much to get a lot of volume. OK, and again, regrade the outside. Very important when you're doing your shift to select everything beforehand. Um, OK, the outside has been regraded. Um, and now I've got a tiny bit more cut than fill, which is generally a better situation to be in. Uh, OK, I'm happy. It's balanced. Um, oh, you know what? I forgot to set a break line. Let's take a look at the 3D. This is always a good idea. Um, and I might as well look at them both at the same time. So I forgot to set these two features as break lines. And look at the shape I'm getting. So 3D is your friend. It helps you see what's going on. Um, so I'm going to change these two features, this one, and shift click that one to be break lines, apply, and now recalculate the volume and the, and the surface. That's better. That's what I wanted to get. OK, now I, I'm pretty sure I'm not balanced. So I'm just going to do one more um, adjustment. The Oh, recalculate the volumes. When you do a grading operation, it does a volume calculation automatically if you choose that checkbox. But I can do this um, independently here. So volume calculation. Right, so we've got a lot more cut than fill. Um, let's lift it up oh, a meter and leave it at that. So Control A, select all, lift it up one meter. 
um, let's just call it 403. And recalculate the grade. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it quits here. Um, one or two more iterations, I could get these to balance. But um, these numbers are uh, important, of course, if you're doing an actual construction, and you can copy those to the clipboard, and then um, they they come out in a format that will paste into a spreadsheet or a, a Word document or whatever. Okay. Now, um, what else do we want to do with our pond? Well, we, we can see what it looks like. Um, how about a cross-section? So I'm going to throw in a cross-section. New feature. Section. And a cross-section should be a draped feature. Draw it with the mouse. Let's snap it onto the corners of the bottom. There we go. And then I'll just uh, control M for move size. Oops, didn't mean to do that. What I would like to do is um, pick up the corner of that thing. There we go. Um, there's my, okay, it's falling off the model in the foreground. And you can see it in the, in the 3D window here but it's not falling off the model in the background. Anyway, I'm going to ignore this error message. There we go. There's my cross section. Um, and I can see it in the 3D window. And here it is in the cross section window. And you can see why there's more cut than fill. We've got all this cut here and only a little bit of fill on the berm. Um, easy enough to make another cross section. I could um, duplicate this or draw a new feature. Um, I'll choose the latter. It remembers the um, property of the current feature, so I don't have to do anything more than just click on mouse. And I'll just draw a feature like so. I've already got one profile window. And you can create, uh, I think, up to 10 of them. Let's just create another one. And there's the long section. So the screen's getting a little crowded. We've got um, two cross sections, a plan window, and a 3D window. Uh, we're going to show you later how to do a multiplot, put those all on a page. Um, and that is my pond example. Oh, one more little thing. How much does this pond hold? What is the volume of the interior? Well, 50 by 100 gives me 5,000 square meters uh, times the depth of 8 would be about 40,000 cubic meters. But that uh, doesn't include the sloping sides. So why don't I just pick this boundary feature here, which is at the top of the sloping side, make it into a surface volume boundary, and calculate the volume. So terrain modeling, calculate volume. Volume enclosed by a single surface. This is often used to calculate the volume of a pile. Now I'm using it to calculate the volume of a hole. Uh, did I remember to click apply? No, I didn't. OK, so the current feature is a surface volume boundary apply. That's better. Do the volume calculation, single surface. Use polygons, OK. And there it is. So the extra sloping bit there um, adds to my uh, 40,000 cubic meters uh, rectangular solid and, and brings it up to about 61,000. That's if we filled it to the brim. Uh, of course, you'd probably want to leave a, um, a, a meter or so for slopping. And we could take this, buffer it to the inside, do it again, find out what the thing would be um, if it was a meter less full. Mm -hmm.